Welcome back, everyone, to another fantastic episode of Hotel Talk. And today I have with us yet another very special guest of St. Raphael Resort and Marina and someone who's a dear friend to all of us, the whole team, Brother Moss, our sales and marketing manager, myself and so many others. Um, familiar faces are always here to welcome you back, Jean. Thank so you. it's Jean-Emmanuel Hay, who is the owner and director of Class and Relax magazine, which many of you may know because it's a fantastic publication. And he's here to tell us not just about the magazine and where you can get it and what it is, but really about him, how he got into this industry and what he does and really some amazing stories along the way. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Farah. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I'm so happy we managed to find time in your busy schedule um, to fit in a quick um, recording. So um, I want to start at the beginning, really, and you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously, we know you're French, but um, tell us yeah, where you were born, where you grew up, okay. and how, how did you get into luxury magazines? That was a long way. <laughs> <laughs> we like the long uh, ways. Yes. Um, I was born in uh, the eastern part of France, nearby the border with Germany. And uh, winter are very long in these places and very cold. <laughs> so when I was uh, a kid, uh, very uh, quickly, I mm -hmm. became completely fan of tropical fishes. <laughs> and that was my hobby. Uh, I got one aquarium, two, three, four, five, six, and then 14, and then 40. 40 aquariums yes, at home? At home, yes. And my parents were very kind to give me the chance to get all this aquarium and places wow, to, exactly. to, raise, to raise fishes. Because the idea Where was to Where did you put them? them? How big was your house? <laughs> it <laughs> must <was> just have <laughs> been aquariums. It was not such a big place with... Uh, big aquarium, but it was enough to discover the, the, the fish of the world. And then naturally, when I uh, uh, began to, to, to look for a job, I become a journalist in this hobby. So I, uh, I read, I wrote, and I did pictures of fishes, tropical fishes. Then this was the season about uh, 35 years ago, the season where the first people got reef at home, and they were able to raise them, to breed them, and to get some uh, reef uh, in their house, new reef, I mean, because before they were considered that people destroying the nature, mm. taking reef from the sea, yeah. and then the reef was yeah. dying, you know? Yeah, and, and without the ocean, we won't be here either. Exactly, and then we got the technology uh, to breed the reef, and it was a big problem because they were not allowed by... Uh, uh, by Washington Convention to uh, to sell this reef, so they were mm. obliged to get a lot of reef and to put them as a garbage. They were not they, they were not allowed to do something with this, and we uh, tried to create a magazine uh, uh, with scientists and to explain that things are ch uh, had changed at this time and it was possible to do fantastic stories. So I went to Monaco to the ocean. And Oceanographic uh, Museum, and uh, I did an editorial with the uh, director, and he told me to take an helicopter and to make some aerial view of uh, the Oceanographic Museum for my magazine. Okay. And I met the owner of the helicopter company, <laughs> and he told me, oh, your magazine is very nice, but we are looking for a magazine that could, uh, you know, most of the people, they take the helicopter from Nice to Monaco, it's seven minutes. But they have to wait 20 minutes to get the helicopter. They don't know what to do. Let's do a magazine together. I said, that's not bad. At the, at the same period, I came to Cyprus for the first time. And uh, immediately, I was, uh, I was told, okay, you are doing nice pictures. Let's do a magazine to promote Cyprus and the, the best of the, the industry, the tourism industry in France. So I mixed both idea and I create Class and Relax magazine. <laughs> that was 25 years ago. Wow. <laughs> wow, um, a quarter of a century later <laughs> and the magazine is still going strong. Yes. Still considered one of the leaders. Yes, we had, the we had bad, uh, like everybody, uh, 
bad weather, let's say, with this pandemic and everything stopped. It was no more possible to get a magazine in your hand. So I created the digital. Mm -hmm. I was against the digital, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I try as long as possible to say that my magazine was uh, a rare magazine and it was very nice to get it at the same, at the right place, at the right mm -hmm. moment. But with the pandemic, it was no more possible. Yeah. And now I'm quite happy to, with this, uh, to have made also a digital uh, mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And so tell us, what did you love about Cyprus? Like, why Cyprus? Because, okay, we have a lot of French people coming to Cyprus and enjoying it. But it's definitely not our main market. Yeah. And it's not a main market for, for, for France, for French people. Exactly. I mean, they think of going to other places, Tunisia, yeah. to Morocco, to... Mm -hmm. There's so many countries that, that French people like to travel to. Um, yeah. So what, what intrigues you to uh, marry these two uh, together? To be honest, the real story of this was that uh, I was used to go to Crete many, many times and working in Crete as a photographer. And one day I reached the far east place of Crete I stand on a rock in front of the sea and say, what is in front of me? I took a map, no GPS at this time. <laughs> I took a map and I check in front of me, uh, straight to the east was Cyprus. And I said, next trip will be to Cyprus. When I discovered Cyprus, I, I, I discovered two things. First, it was uh, uh, an island with very friendly people and the culture very uh, nearby the Greek culture. But in the meantime, very different and an island completely different than, than Crete. I mean that uh, Cyprus for me uh, was a full discovery regarding the Greek island and, and Crete. It was completely, absolutely different. And uh, uh, immediately I loved the place and the people, I have to say. The second point is that I got uh, very... Uh, very quickly, I got business in Cyprus too. And uh, this is one of the reasons also I continue. Mm. Uh, regarding the French market, 25 years ago, I if I remember well, only 3% of the tourists visiting Cyprus were from the French market, were coming from the French. And today, I don't think we have many more. It does not change, really. One of the reasons was we didn't got flights, very few flights. The second reason is that, uh, how to say, everybody knows that the French are a little bit lazy with uh, foreign languages. <laughs> and uh, that was a big problem, mm. uh, not to speak English for, for, yeah. Not, yeah, for, for so many French people. Mm -hmm. So they didn't came also for this reason, uh, which was not a good uh, perception of the reality because many people speak French in Cyprus, especially in the hotel industry. Yes, there, there are. <laughs> Actually, it's surprising how many do speak French. Yeah. It is. But OK, obviously, you know, because of colonizations and mandates and everything else, yeah. I mean, there's many countries in the world that French is the second or even first language. So it is very easy yes. for French people to go there and, exactly. and speak French. Whereas here, everybody does speak English. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we do, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to say we do get a lot of groups that come, business groups, uh, incentive groups, um, family travel from France, but yes, it's not. It's not one of it our biggest not, markets. No. Yeah. Now the young generation for the young generation is completely different mm. because the, the the young French people they speak English. Yeah. Much more better than the previous generation. Yes, definitely. And so they travel much more uh, yeah. abroad in, in English speaking countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, and hopefully uh, they'll all be coming. Yes, slowly, slowly here. Imagine last year we got one flight. I think only one flight per week from France to Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And this year, it's something like 25 flights yeah. per week. Well, at one point, so we had daily. Yeah, we had daily to Charles de Gaulle. Yeah. Exactly. And so now, now uh, I think we're getting back to that now. Yes, and I walked to Limassol in yeah. the city a little bit, and uh, I heard many French, I have to say, the three yeah, last day. It's a big I surprise know. for me. It's the first time, probably, I hear French people speaking. Yeah, in, in we've Limassol. had quite a few this year here as well, and I yeah. keep on, every time I hear them speak French, I'm like, oh, where are you from? <laughs> Paris. And I met a lovely um, gentleman uh, about a month and a half ago who was staying here, who was the owner of a, yeah. a, he told me, a very nice restaurant in 
in Paris. Paris. So yeah. And not only more. from Paris, because we have flight also from many other uh, towns mm -hmm. in France now. So it's very interesting to notice that yeah. all the country can can now reach Cyprus. Can now, exactly. It's not just, yeah, the capital. Yeah. Absolutely. I must apologize to our listeners if you hear me snivel. I have allergies at this time of year, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm not passing on colds. Um, so another question that I wanted to ask you was, what makes publishing so interesting? I had also another guest on this podcast um, talking about, yeah, actually maritime and um, yeah, publishing and journalism. So what do you love about it? Okay, that's, a, that's an easy question and a difficult one. Okay. The easiest point is to say that when I was a kid, yeah. uh, five years old, going the first year at school, um, we had to make some drawings for the teacher and to explain what we did. And she was writing our thought. So I was sitting on the drone, I was on the drawer, I was sitting at the table and writing. And I explained to the teacher when I will uh, in the future I want to be a publisher, I want to make a book. I was five years old. I wow. cannot explain this. <laughs> Nobody you knew, can explain you knew this. From then. Yeah. <laughs> so it's because yeah. my parents kept all these things, and so I, I can. So they know. I found so I oh. found this 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 drawing, and I said, "Wow, I did this. So I was sweet. five years old." So uh, that's one point. The second point is that uh, I was a photographer. I like to write, and uh, I worked for several uh, publishing companies. Mm -hmm. At one uh, time. I thought myself that uh, it would be very interesting to know everything about the work and to be able to write, to make the pictures, to make the layout, and to go to the printing because you can show the quality of the paper. You can, you, anyway, you can, at this time, you are 100% the decider of the decision maker of what you mm -hmm. will make. And if you want a beautiful product like Less and Relax, you have to be at each stage able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. And so when you do this on a technical point of view, then uh, what is fantastic is that you you spend all your life meeting fantastic people too. That's travel and tourism, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? Class and Relax and travel and tourism. And so what's been, who have been some of the most interesting people you've met? You don't have to give names, but I mean, and, and also, second question, that maybe goes hand in hand, um, where have been some of the most interesting places that you've traveled to? Oh, um, for sure. Crete is one of the most impressive for me. Yeah, yes. that's so nice. I still haven't been to Crete, because I'm embarrassed Crete, to say. Crete is a, is a uh, so I don't speak... I don't tell you about class and relax. I tell you about experience. Mm -hmm. Crete for me is one of the most impressive places I visited because of the experience with people. Very difficult. Not easy to be a friend. But when it happens, you, you become friends. It's for your life. And um, I didn't visit a, a place for 10 years. Then two years ago, I came back and uh, I called my friend. It was like yesterday. Not 10 years like yesterday, and he, he told me, uh, listen, if you are coming to the village, I give you my house, and I will go to my brother, and I give you my house at the time you will be there. Imagine. So <laughs> this is something for me very, gives me a lot of emotion when I speak about this. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strong. So yeah. Very. And, uh, Genuine Mediterranean hospitality exactly. and love and care, and exactly. that's what we're all about on this side of the world. Yeah. yeah. And now if you... Um, if we talk about class and relax, um, of course, Cyprus when, was a very impressive place because uh, I saw in 25 years the changes. So I, I was not able to say 25 years ago it was the most impressive experience, but it's a very impressive experience when you see what happened in 25 years, yeah. especially in Limassol, yeah. but also in Paphos and everywhere. Um, I remember that the first time I came at, uh, at Saint Rafael, uh, Saint Rafael got the only marina in Cyprus, yes, I think. Yes, and that was yeah. the first one. That was the first one, and first for, private. And, yeah. and for years. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. And even still, we're the only hotel with a marina exactly. yeah, until now. And it was the first private, yeah. Yeah, only Port private with a marina. But the things have moved so much with creation of marinas, yeah. with the, uh, all these buildings now that are coming. And uh, you can feel also that, uh, um, you can feel that Cyprus is more mature now for luxury markets. Mm -hmm. Yes, I definitely think we're ready for it. We've. Yeah. It's been something that we've been gearing up towards for a long time, but now we, we really are the products. Yeah. It's not just what we're saying. We've got amazing, I mean, from cultural activities, we always had the, the sites and the history and mm -hmm. the culture and the cuisine, and of course the weather, but we really have so much more. We have the trails and we have stunning hotels and we have amazing restaurants and entertainment and the marinas and luxury yachts. And exactly. Just everything, everything yeah. someone could want. Yeah. Um, and it's what I love about Cyprus is that we're small and big at the same time. So. Exactly. That's the most surprising thing for yeah. many people. Yeah. Now, if you tell me about small and big places, I would suggest the Seychelles also as a fantastic mm -hmm. yeah. uh, destination for class and relax. Yeah. I visited many times the Seychelles and uh, all this, all this private islands and uh, you have the feeling it's a small country but it's not in fact because you have to go from one island to another one and is some it 200,000 people that live there or yes no, or it's less. a very small uh, Maybe less. yeah in, in terms of a friend population. of mine used to live there and yeah she told me yes how. but it's a, it's an amazing country uh, yeah uh, and then um, of course you have many you have plenty of places uh, which are interesting but I have a special uh, um, emotion when I speak about uh, South America and uh, the Amazon. Yeah. It's another way of uh, promoting luxury because luxury is not in, uh, in, in the place, in the resort, but luxury is the nature and the wild forest. And this is something also uh, very impressive. Uh, it took me time, but... Um, I've been many times in the Amazon and I learned slowly, slowly how to go myself and alone in the forest. Mm -hmm. And when you go for a walk alone in the in the Amazon forest, you feel so small and so... Yeah, must be amazing. Everything can happen and nobody can help you also because you have you cannot reach anybody. There is but no Where no do you mobile. stay when you go? Uh, mostly I stayed in French Guiana, which is um, north of Brazil. Yeah. And... Uh, I moved a little bit to Suriname, which is another small country, yeah. uh, which is on the, on the west mm -hmm. of French Guiana. And you have the forest, you know. You have only two, three roads. The people are, are living there. Then you have only, everything is green. It's the forest. Amazing. It's very amazing because uh, it's, today there are few places in the world like this. And that's why we must protect <laughs> it. Yes. We must protect <laughs> it. So back to the magazine, which... Out of interest, which covers sell better? What have you found? Because I often find that in hotels, sometimes I think something will work and then it surprises me that it's not always the case. And then, yeah. so in your many, many years of experience, which have you found have been like a better, better selling covers? Um, La Mamounia in Maroc, Morocco, yeah. uh, was an impressive uh, place and I got impressive uh, uh, messages from our readers also yeah because it's a it's a destination when you open the door of this uh, palace you are in another world mm -hmm. and as long you stay there you are in this world it's no more morocco it's it's nowhere in the world it's la mamunia and but was that just because of the image or was it how it was taken yes or? i think the image is very important but also when you can feel on the image when you have the time to do it, and as a photographer, I can tell this. Um, mostly, uh, the photographer, when they are doing pictures in the in the, the hotel industry and uh, even in the luxury hotel mm. industry, they work by day, and they say, "Okay, I will come for two, three days, and I will make this." Yeah, uh, I never did it like this. Usually, I, 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 I'm speaking about weeks. Yeah, one week, two weeks. And I don't work all the day. Mm. I work at some moment of the day. And also, I have to know perfectly the place and to feel it. Mm. When I say to feel it, I have to feel also the people. Yeah. And what uh, 
what you can what kind of emotion you can give to a picture which is yeah. sometimes very difficult yeah um, it takes a lot of time yeah it's not so just the usually, techniques it's usually yeah. it's a question of um, of time you know it's mm. like uh, uh, how to say everything has to be uh, organized slowly slowly <laughs> siga, it's siga. difficult siga, siga. <laughs> and today we are in a world everybody's running yeah. so it's very Everyone difficult to get the time yesterday. yeah it's very difficult and when you can get this uh, the people they feel this in class and relax it. because uh, um, I take my time yeah oh that's so nice <laughs> in a world that is yeah everybody's run off their feet that's very refreshing to hear and what about articles what do people find most interesting to read about or what um, has been the best, yeah. Uh, regarding our readers, they are, they are looking for surprises. And they don't want to get experience. Yeah, if you can, something unique. Exactly. When you can provide an editorial and a unique experience, mm. for sure, they're happy. Now, uh, I tried to push for a long time. Today, we, we everybody speaks about s sustainability and we have to do a lot of effort for this. Yeah. I'm doing this in class and relax for 20 years. So I was maybe before of these things, I was telling Hotelier, what are you doing uh, to give a luxurious experience mm -hmm. without using too much energy, without destroying sometimes the environment because mm -hmm. it happened many times in places. I remember also, even in the Seychelles, I remember an hotel which is in the middle of the mangrove. Uh, the hotel is beautiful and they protect the mangrove today, but they destroy one part, of course, to make the hotel. Yeah. So, um, so uh, that was something very important for me from the very yeah. beginning. And uh, I got the feeling uh, that uh, my readers, they were impressed by this, mm -hmm. to have luxury and nature. Yeah. And, yeah. and the link between, because yeah. I'm... I'm uh, I'm never more happy than when I'm in the nature, I have to say. So when I can mix both and I can show this experience to my readers, they appreciate it. That's uh, so lovely. Uh, for yachting, the same. For yachting, uh, uh, I remember that uh, at the Monaco Yacht Show 25 years ago, the most important thing on board a yacht was to, to have uh, as many things in gold as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Today it's normal. Shiny. Yes, everything was in gold. Today it's normal like this, and uh, I'm very happy that the things have, have changed to, to go to more, uh, 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 let's say, efficient yeah. Uh, things. Yeah, yeah eco-friendly for the for the, for the well-being. You know. And um, do you have a favorite quote or book that you'd like to share with everyone listening? Uh. Tell me again, please. <laughs> a favorite, no problem. A favorite quote or saying or mantra that you like. I mean, okay, you've already said to marry luxury and <laughs> and nature. Or a favorite book that you've yes. read that um, you think is... That's a very difficult question. Yeah. Um, uh, I spent quite a lot of time with Buddhists and uh, in their philosophy... I like uh, the fact that uh, uh, they spend a lot of time telling you if a table is a table or not. Yeah. What is, what is the thing you feel today with the material you have? And they are just in a transition. They are not, it's not something definitive. You know? It's yeah. something that will change. And yeah. I love this idea. Even in photography, when you make a picture of a baby turtle on the beach, yeah. you have this fantastic picture of the baby turtle going to the to the sea. And when you see this, uh, what happened to the turtle? Yeah. Is is the turtle in the sea? A big fish came, eat maybe, maybe a bird. Life is yeah. changing all the time. And we try to keep some images like, uh, uh, okay, it will not move, but everything is moving but all the time. Everything is moving and changing. All the time. And uh, we have the feeling things don't move, but they move all the time. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Thank that. You. So my final question <laughs> from the team here at St. Raphael Resort and Marina. 
Shall I read it to you? Yes, please. See? Oh, we got two. two. Okay, we'll take this one. <laughs> and I wish I could read this, but... Okay, it's good you picked up two because I'll read the other one. Um, you have one wish. What are you going to ask for? Oh. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. I like juicy questions like this. Uh, one wish. I would say that I would, I would like human not to, not to look forward to the universe and to galaxy and just to have a better look on Earth and to say we are living here and we have to save it. That's what quite a few people have said now. You know, stop concentrating on moving to Mars and let's yeah. look at saving our own planet. Yeah. Yeah. What a lovely way to end this episode on. Jean-Emmanuel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. So uh, happy Farah. you're back in Cyprus. Thank you. It was very nice to talk with you and to have this discussion today. Thank you yes. so much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.